So welcome to the famous Dvors River Heritage Site. I spent here many, many times with my students showing this beautiful place. You are supposed to say, wow, how it's possible, what a fantastic place, etc, etc. About two billion years ago, these zebra stripe rocks were part of the enormous underground pool of molten rocks of magma. And then from there, magma was rising upwards toward the Earth's surface, but they didn't reach the surface, but they were treated as a seal, that like horizontal body. They stopped below, maybe three, five kilometers below the Earth's surface, and magma stopped there and cooled and started crystallizing, forming the layers, horizontal layers. So you bring new magma, it's depositing layer, another one comes, and you're depositing another layer, then another one comes from the deep storage to the shallow level, and this way we formed such kind of stratified magma chambers, which were called layered intrusions. Now, luckily for us, the erosion works hand in hand uh, with us, and then erosion of this part, so that in some parts which are mostly eroded, these parts of the bushel, they, they come to the surface. That is the eastern part, and that is the western part, and this is, these are parts which we basically uh, can study and can examine, and uh, this is where all mining takes place. The reason why we're here, not because of these anothocytes, but because of rocks which are a little bit Sitting, sitting below these anothocytes, these black ones, which are called chromatites. These are rocks which are composed of one single mineral called chromite. It's very valuable mineral because basically that is the only mineral from which we extract chromium, which is very important industrial element. We use it mostly in steel industry, because chromium, together with vanadium, makes steel stronger. It also makes them corrosion resistant. So that's what really makes the chromium important for our human society. The Bushard uh, Igneous Complex is the largest layer of intrusions in the world and the largest fossilized magma chamber in the world. Just to give you an idea about the size, so it's nine kilometers thick, more than 400 kilometers in size, and it occupies an area comparable to the size of Iceland, for example. We know for a long time that the magma which, which we need to produce such kind of layers, it should crystallize chromite as single mineral. And it was clear for us for a long time, but the problem was always where to get such magma. All these basaltic magmas they are coming from the mantle. The mantle is rich in mineral, which is called olivine. And of course, if you melt the rocks which are rich in olivine, when this magma comes to the shallow level and crystallize, it will crystallize olivine, not chromite. So that's why we have been trying hard for many years, for decades, to produce this ore forming uh, magma in the shallow chambers. And that's what I started thinking, so why if we cannot get these magmas in the mantle, and it seemed that we had a problem to produce this magma inside the chamber, in the shallow chamber like bushel. So maybe then the answer is that these magmas may be converted, these magmas, normal basaltic magmas which are produced in the mantle, maybe there's a trick is that they are converted into the one which produce deposits on the way from the mantle to the shallow level. So that was the idea. We realized that some magmas, when they're taken from the high pressure, from the depth to the shallow level, they are converted into the one which can crystallize chromite, chromite alone. So this research is just a start of uh, our new novel line of research because we feel that we got answer not only for the chromatides, but probably for other magmatic deposits as well. And we suspect that there are other magmatic deposits, like vanadium-rich magnetite layers in the bushfall complex, 
which may also be ultimately related to the same process.